Hello, hello there. My name is Maria, and with my co-host Corey, and we are the real guys. We are here, and it is a very special episode. So I hope you're ready to enjoy it with us. Uh, last week we spoke to director Alex Lightman about his newest FMV video experience video game Nightbook, and today we're actually going to review that for you. And uh, we've got a packed show for you today, and we are your number one platform on the airwaves and YouTube for pop culture, film, and television discussion. As always, I'm accompanied by my co-host Corey. How are you doing today, Corey? I am doing very well, thank you. Good, good. You can find us on Instagram, on The Real Show, and on Twitter, at The Real Show FM. And we're also on Google, Apple, and Spotify, and Amazon Podcasts. Anywhere you get your podcasts, we're there. We also have a YouTube channel where we post exclusive content. We are The Real Show on YouTube. Find us, subscribe to us, and enjoy what we do. Hello, Corey. Hello. Hello. That was a... um, shall we go on to Nightbook? I think we should go on to Nightbook. Yes. Um, first off, what was your experience of uh, speaking to Alex Lightman? How did you find that? I hope everyone that's listening has already listened to that so, episode. Yeah, if, if not, go back and listen to exactly, it. Exactly, if you haven't. Also, spoilers uh, for Nightbook. As of, yes. As time of recording, it is coming out tomorrow. Yes. Uh, it's not been out for long, so if you don't want spoilers and results of different actions, go play it. No, I, I liked it. I, I liked talking to Alex. It's very. Um, you can tell, because he's, he's a director, he's very good interview wise you know very clear mm. speaking very nice to talk to very relaxed very calm knows yeah, what he's yeah. doing you know mm. just a, a nice nice chap yes a very relaxed man for not a very relaxed game yeah very very edgy <laughs> your seat edgy your seat stuff it's like it's like one of them people where like you're, you're sat there and they go oh you know a nice casual looking guy oh what what music are you into and just pulls out like death metal it's yeah, like what yeah all right yeah very sort of horror style, yeah. horror, thriller, supernatural kind of stuff is Nightbook. So let's go into it. Mm. Now, have you played this sort of FMV style butterfly effect type game before, Corey? I have, right, okay. So I've played um, sort of your games where you can do different options and different things happen. So I've can kind we, of played like... Can you like explain a, what, a, what an FMV is? What an FMV is, effectively. Do you want to take that? Yeah, so an FMV is essentially... Imagine a film, right? So imagine you're watching, watching a movie. Yeah. However, there's certain points that pop up where it's like, oh, you can do this or you can do this. And it's interactive. That's the whole point. So essentially, mm-hmm. it's a film, but you get to make the options. So like, mm-hmm. imagine a movie meets like Dragon Age or Mass Effect, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that sort of thing. It's like if um, Until Dawn used actual people, mm-hmm. essentially. Or uh, that Netflix Black Mirror episode. Yeah, Bandersnatch. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's fat. what many people that's what people may be familiar with who are listening. <laughs> that's now. for most I would say that's the that's the biggest thing that people would be familiar with that we can compare it to, yeah. yeah. Or if you ever played a Telltale game before. Yes, like Walking Dead. Yeah, like the Walking Dead or like the Game of Thrones one. Yes. Or, or like the or or Batman. Like, you know, Telltale game make, make just they make thousands of games for different people. They do. That all, yeah. have, all have the same mechanics. So But yeah, I mean it's it's so I've played like stuff like that. I've played like The Walking Dead. I've played like Mass yeah, Effect, yeah. Dragon Age, but I've not played uh, something where it's actual actors and it's more of a film kind of environment. Yes, more of a f- cinematic environment. Let's say, exactly, as opposed to graphics and and whatnot. Mm. Um, but it's the game starts off. We're going to take a very non-linear approach because we're trying yes. to avoid spoilers. Yes. So we're just going to talk about the different elements and what we thought about them. And would you like to give would you like to give Nightbook a real rating? Uh, I can give it one, if you want and then to. This, do you, have you have you thought of one? I I, I was thinking while we were, while we were doing this. I think I, I've got one for it. I don't know if we're doing it, but I've got one for it. So I do have one. Okay, well we will let, let let's do it then. Let's give one, hey. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay, cool, cool. So um, to carry on with the review, let's talk characters. Yes. To start off with, because the first mm. character we see uh, is actually not not a not a character, not a character with a human face. It is this sort of UI that's used. Um, UGI standing for user interface. Yes. The computer that the main character, Laurelin, uh, accesses. He's standing in a very um, sort of desktop style with all the apps and a nice little screensaver picture, those sort of cutesy, innocent images um, for your screensaver. And then she goes onto a sort of video call app and... Does she... Does she... Um, she speaks to her boss first, I think. Uh, yeah. Um... <sighs> It's either it's either the woman she's talking to to translate, or it's her partner. 
I think it. I think it's. I think it's Cody first because she has to. Wait, no. She t- she texts her partner. Yes, and he sends, he sends her, her the. Partner, Pierce, yeah, he Pierce sends him the video. Mango a text to say she's doing her. Um, she's doing her translation evaluation, and she's using his uh, holiday video to do it. And yes, yeah. it'd be helpful to hear his voice and to see him while she's while she's doing it, which was nice. But it's not the first thing she does, is it? No, I mean like. The first thing she's doing is making her father, her, her yes. ill father, mentally ill father, some food. And the first choice you're given is, do you give him a sedative or not? Mm. I mean, like this, so this, like literally, I, I, was, I was watching it, right? And it started, and I was like, okay, cool, we're going to get a sense of the people. And it throws you in straight away, here's, the, here's an option. Um, yeah. Thankfully, I turned on the, the streamer option, which allows you to essentially... Take as much time as you want picking an option. Oh, did you know I didn't do that? I, I did. That. I didn't because I thought I want to be in the moment. I want to be in the tense decision-making moment. You know. I knew that if I'm playing this, there's going to be times where I'm sat there, literally f- thinking in my head for all the pros and cons. Um, no, I've, I I did it gut reaction, which I think oh, is good enough. that we both took a different way about it. I mean, to be fair, we were talking about it afterwards. We li- we both did pick essentially the opposite options of each other by accident. We did. Yeah, we did. Which is very interesting to, for a review type thing because we're both going to have different experiences. Of we it. are. But I went gut reaction immediately. I was like, right, I want to just be doing this on. I wanted to do this completely on what I think. Like you know, right? Oh, should I give him a sedative? I did initially give him a sedative. I thought, right, he looks mad. He looks yes. mad. He needs it, kind of thing. You see, I and, I didn't. Oh yeah. <laughs> so there's our, there's our difference straight away. But yeah, I still thought I had to lock the door on him when he asked. I was like, right, what if he gets out? Like, yeah. What if that's... he gets out and he's. That's the Insane. thing. Insane. Lock the door on him. Kind of yes, thing. I also locked the door on him. I was like, nope, I'm not risking. But to be fair, I was the opposite. I locked the door because I was like, if some weird creature comes in, if a door's locked, they can't get to him. Yeah, yeah. That's why I locked it. I was like, right, he's he's no one can get to him unless they, you know, the, the key happens to be in the door, which it was. But ignoring that bit, I was like, nope, he's he's in his own room now. That's it. He's done. And it was realistically because there's several times they give you the option to leave the to leave the apartment. Yes. Which I was like, right, go, get out. Because obviously that's yeah. a horror movie thing, isn't it? <laughs> that's, you that's... never want to stay in the cabin where the murderer is. You want to get out. Any so like, okay. Any chance I got to leave, I picked it. Yeah, me as well. But they never let you. <laughs> never don't. There's always they're always trying to keep you in there <laughs> and like, oh, you want to carry on. Um, but Laurelin is yes. um, also played very very wonderfully. I very enjoyed. Um, her characterization by Julie Dray, she was uh, excellent as this as yeah. the protagonist. I mean, the, the I did actually quite like the characters in this as well. Yeah, um, the cast was good. The cast was very good. It lends itself because it's filmed in a pandemic, and it's people are filmed literally over a call, essentially, like you're seeing in the, in the story. It lends itself well to like all these all these characters seem real. Like yeah. I could I could meet them you know, down at a park or something, and they seem like people that's actually having, like, a natural conversation. The conversations yeah. seem good. Like, sometimes if it's scripted and it's real, you can kind of tell that, oh, that's not something people will be actually saying. But they sound like they know each other. They're having interactions. A lot of these characters mm-hmm. do know each other. They're not, like, all these new people being sprung up on, on them. They know who they are. They've interacted before, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because um, there's a lot of back and forth in this, isn't there? It there's has a lot of back and forth, uh, specifically between... Uh, the father and daughter, and the uh, partner as well. There's a lot yes. of that between them two. Because um, the partner, Pierce, is trying to make a development project for a sort of health spa hotel yes. in this faraway island. Uh, is it called the God's, God's Eye or the God's Hand Cape or something like yes. that? Something like that. Yeah. Um, he's trying to make uh, he's trying to make like a spa, a hotel in there, and trying to build on your aging He's doing the classic thing in The Shining. Yes. They're building on the ancient Indian burial grounds. Yeah, essentially. Um, yeah, and it's going to awaken awaken spirits uh, using the language of a uh, kanar, which is spoken in spoken in these uh, islands. Mm. So, but it all comes around when uh, Cody, uh, Laurelin's boss at the translation um, at the translation agency, the interpretation agency, he's like, "I've got a job for you. You can speak to your former student." Or you can speak to these two businessmen yes. trying to arrange a deal, or your former student who's trying to have something uh, translated, interpreted. Yeah. Now, 
You went for your former student, didn't I? I did. I went for, was it Max? I believe his name was. Max, yes. Yes. And I went for um, the business transaction. You did. Between a guy called Jean, Jean Pere Theron, a nice. French businessman, and Mr. Carl Vito, who's played by Colin Salmon, one of the big draws of this game. Hmm. Now, what was your experience in um, the, the, the storyline with, with Max? Yeah, so Max calls you up because he wants to speak to his mum. And yes. therefore, he needs someone to translate what's what's going on. Yeah. And so you call you call Max, you call Max's mum, and it starts off where they're just doing a back and forth, you know, oh, hi, how are you, what have you been doing, how's work? Max reveals his learning canal and is being taught it, and then pulls out, right, this massive book that he has. Um, I believe it's his dad's. I think he says it's his dad's. And shows his mum and his mum's like oh no you shouldn't be learning this this isn't good mentions all the kind of like conspiracy stuff with the spirits and the tree and he's very adamant that that's not real it's whatever it's you know he wants to yeah. learn it because of his past and that's it um which then causes you as a player to decide who do you translate because both people are talking over each other do you translate the mum and tell yeah. max that you shouldn't be doing this or do you translate max and tell the mum what Max is saying about what he thinks. So you kind of have a dilemma of almost what side are you on? Um, I I went with the mum because I was like, this is a horror game, so the spirits must be a thing. So I'm going to back her up. Um, but ultimately, he reads out the, you know, the words anyway. And all, you know, but that's it. The, that's, that's, the, plot, the plot is open at that point. Anything could happen. Okay, and we get the sort of we get the spirit element from there, do we? Yes. Now I'm I'm pretty sure when we spoke about this that if you picked the other option, it's essentially a similar thing, but not quite with the two different characters. Well, let's okay. Well, let's go into my I pick the business transaction. Yes. And there, Colin Salmon is in all his glory. Obviously, the the the, the, the biggest name, biggest name on the card. We all like a bit of Colin Salmon, don't we, Corey? Yeah, a little bit of Colin Salmon. Yeah, Colin Salmon's there, and he's Mr. Carl Vito. He's an English entrepreneur, philanthropist, and mm. he's in London. And you're communicating with uh, Jean-Pierre Theron, who is in Paris. And obviously, our time difference, that actually comes into play. But what happens is, Jean-Pierre Theron is like, you must read the book, I must have proof the book is real, kind of thing. And that's an awful French accent, by the way. <laughs> I do my best. And... Carl Vito's like, okay, I'll send the pages to the interpreter. He sends the pages to you. You obviously have to read. You're forced to read the book. Right, but it's okay. Like Jean-Pierre kind of warns you. He says, but you must be careful. There's communication to the spirits. You must be careful with it. <laughs> he sounds Russian. Well, <laughs> I, I can't clarify because I haven't done him. So I don't know if he sounds Russian or if you're making right, okay, him sound no, Russian. French. Just imagine this French voice <laughs> coming out of this Russian. <laughs> right, okay. Just imagine, you know, imagine a French accent instead of a Russian one. Okay, okay. right. He goes, you must be careful, there's communication with the spirits, you must entice the, the spirits to come from the book, kind of thing. Right. And But you have to read, you, you force me, I thought, right, okay, we've got to read it, mm-hmm. and it's gonna. I thought it was going to force me to read it either way, so I have to read it, and obviously that brings in the spirits through the reading of Canal. So. Yes. And then you have to go back and forth between them, trying to get the book, because Carl Beto says if you destroy the book, then you can mm-hmm. destroy... The, you can destroy the curse. Yes, uh, Max's mum tells you that in my version. Yeah, okay. So if you destroy the book, you can destroy the curse. All right, okay. Well, I can't get the book because you know you're trapped in your you're trapped in your apartment and you can't leave. And I'll, yes. Okay. So go right. Okay, I'll send you the pages. Carbito says. So ah. send you all the pages. You go right. Okay. I need to print the pages off and burn the book. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then, then you have to call Mr. Jean Perry Theron calls back and says, right. I want to buy the if I buy the book, I can destroy the book for you. I'm like, okay, okay. So you get on a call with both of them again, You're like, right. right. He needs he says if the price is too high, he's not gonna mm-hmm. buy it. Okay. So that way it's not gonna he's, he won't be able to help you. Yeah. So you're waiting there, and you're like, right, okay. Uh you're you're trying to translate between them, and then he says, Right, the price is the price is um five million five million pounds right book, yeah right and i go oh but there, there was a choice there was a choice of say three million and lie yeah or say five million and be truthful right and i was like oh i don't want to lie because if i get found out that i'm lying but then i thought oh it is a supernatural curse yeah i might as well lie for the supernatural curse <laughs> but then the honesty in me was like no i've got to tell him the truth okay i've got to tell enough. him the truth that it is 
five millions. That's what I said. And then Jean Pierre Theron just left. Oh. He exited the call and it's like, oh no, I've lost it. <laughs> the curse is going to take hold. And and Carl Beto was like, oh my my work's done. And then he left as well. It's like, oh no. It's it's interesting that you get the book sent to you by pages. Mm-hmm. Um. Because Max lives in London, so he essentially bikes down to... He nicks it, and he just bikes down to you. Does he? Yeah, on like a, on like a, a bike. You, you don't see him. It like, gets like put for your post box. Yeah. You've got one of them like uh, massive letter boxes that you kind of like pull open, so you can put a package in it in, in like your front door, and you just pull it open. So you get given the book. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get the option of either you can destroy the book, or you can read the book yourself and try and figure out a way of... Um, oh fixing things I didn't, I didn't even to be honest i didn't even get to destroying the book uh, i chose to i chose to read it which didn't end well no yeah yeah i can imagine <laughs> not i can imagine not that it didn't end well but um yeah i i didn't i read any more of it i only activated the curse but then it was like i had to try and get the book yeah like the actual cop the actual copy of the book or something because there was a passage in there that could like reverse the curse mm. the spirit said because spirits are like, they're like, you are our vessel now. You must follow our instruction kind of thing. Yes. And that's what they were saying. And just like that, that's exactly how they sounded. That's yes, um, exactly how it sounded. So then it was up to it was up to me to come back to Corvito and try and get the book back, trying to get the actual copy of the book. Yeah. So, but of course, he wasn't be able to budge. He's like, oh, right, so I have to deal with, with a way, I have to deal with a way of taking care of my father, who is becoming increasingly possessed by... <laughs> the spirits and the drawings on the wall. Yeah. Also, if you notice, in your dad's room, those draw- drawings, carvings on the wall, they're in the book as well. Oh, right, okay. He was drawing books, the bits, the symbols in the book, they're the same. Oh. So. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I noticed that. Not be- there isn't any trivia, I couldn't find any trivia, but that is actually a little bit of trivia I discovered myself. Oh, nice. So... Self discovery of trivia there, for you. <laughs> um, but to go through uh, the sort of creation and introduction um, of yes. the game, mm-hmm. uh, there's one uh, story, but there's fifteen different endings. There is, there's, f- there's fifteen of them, which is a lot, considering yeah, that like yeah. um, I can, because I if I'm I'm assuming right, because if I if I I got my ending, and I'm assuming that if I went back and did all the same things, I can probably go right. Okay, I, I think I could figure out how to get like another two or three by picking different options. However, yeah. I can't. I don't know how fifteen because I think there's like fifteen endings, and then uh, there's another like four or five scenarios with the other characters that can also happen. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Because it gives you a breakdown of like, oh, this happened with the mum, this happens with Max, this happens with your dad, etc., etc. Yeah. And also, there's like the um, the what was it like the not the mood, the relationship bar that can go up and down. Mm-hmm. But I checked. I know that because on the on the sort of on the pause menu, you can check your relationships. Yes, check. I checked with ev- everyone liked me, and yet I still failed. Oh, nice! <laughs> I never checked the relationships actually. <laughs> I, was I too busy checked reading it. The doc- reading the emails and all the documents. So I was into that. <laughs> I checked it every single time I had an interaction with someone. Oh right, okay. <laughs> um, but I failed because of my own accord, not because someone didn't. I'm assuming there's a point where, like, like your boyfriend, or, like her partner, dumps you or something. Or, like, yeah, I bet there's, I bet there's something like that. I bet there's some, some disastrous consequence. Yeah, of like just getting isn't... everyone to hate you. Yeah, that isn't it leading into your supernatural death. But... Yeah. I, I I chose to. Um, they give you several points to, because the points are with the spirits. They're mm. going to like haunt you, terrorize you, uh, through your father and through all the means. Um, I like the effects on them as well. They're very green. Yeah. It it's... reminded me of. Um, it reminded me of. Uh, there's, what what is it? There's something that's green and it's bright. It reminded me of that. It's, Shrek. It's the way it takes over the whole screen, and <laughs> you see like flashes of um, flashes of different people's faces. Yeah. In the green light. It's cool. I I like that. It's a good effect. It is a good effect. I mean, like I mentioned before, and and Alex mentioned this in the last one, but like all this is made um, with different people's houses and sets, mm. and like I, I, to be fair, I didn't realize while playing this. Whenever like you go up to your dad's room. 
because your dad's meant to be staying with you, he's staying over for some time. Yeah. It didn't cross my mind, but this is two separate houses. I was like, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. She's just going, yep, going upstairs, there's the stairs, yep, cool, perfect. I And until he mentioned, oh, the dad's room and it's uh, the different houses, I was like, ah, oh, that makes, yeah, uh, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, it's, it, is. it is. And it's also, um, it's also that door. You mentioned that door. And yes. The inconsistency of having people near that door <laughs> and having the keys in there. Yeah. And how much of a nightmare it created and how many hours of his life he's lost on staring at that door and trying to find and trying to pick out things to change or things to uh, edit. But yeah, it was, it must have been um, quite the experience. I've never edited a video game before, so. I haven't actually. I mean, it must, it must be like, if, cause if you imagine like, okay, we're going to do a movie. Like, you know how like on YouTube, you can have like cards at the end. We're like, oh, pick this or pick that. Yeah. It's like, imagine doing that and how many different times you'd have to film that all the time. It would be ridiculous. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I sort of said, it's, it's, it's the choose your own adventure, isn't it? Yes, pretty it's much. It's that choose your own adventure genre where you go, they had books on that in the library. Like, you know, yeah. they skip to, if you want to go down the, go down the left path, go to page 223. If you want to go down the right path, go to page 100 kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, it's like, I love that sort of stuff, but man, that must be a, like a pain to like script and plan out. Oh, of course. Of course, there's several games that are that are similar. Um, yeah. This genre. He mentioned that the genre is just starting off. Yes. And I really agree with that. Yeah, there's been many FMVs before, but the genre is still really, really new. It's. And it's coming into a. It's coming into a. Well, not a resurgence lately, but it's coming into an evolution. I think. Yeah. I mean, like, so the the company that did it is Wells Interactive, and yeah. he's worked on a couple of stuff before with them as well, mm-hmm. and. There's a lot. There's like it's it is it is new, and obviously there's going to be stuff that because you're working with a different medium than video games, and you're working with actors, you can't like you know make people look how you want. You can't design all the characters yourself and the voices yeah. and get voice actors in. It's actual people. And of course, we have um, more games, more FMV games from um, yes. Wells Interactive. There's the one that was advertised to us, which is Death Trap Dungeon, the Golden Room. Yes. Uh, it's more um, like fantasy, that one, I suppose. Uh, then we have I Saw Black Clouds, which yeah. is another kind of horror um, horror thriller, I suppose. Then we have Five Dates, which is a rom-com. Which is yes, ridiculous. that was also made in a lockdown, I believe. Was it? I believe that's made just before Nightbook. I believe that's a lockdown project as well. I could be oh. wrong, but I think it is. Uh, the Complex, which was... Another one which, that um, Alex Lightman was involved in that you mentioned. He was. Uh, made, of, made of Skur, which is a survival horror. Yeah, I mean, it's like... It's one of the things where I, I didn't... It ma- It's one of the things where like it makes sense. Like, I can see, I can get the appeal, especially if you bring in... Um, obviously, you mentioned it's, you know, got Colin Salmon, big name. But, like, in the future, if this becomes more of a... Um, a bigger thing you could bring in actually like 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 house like massive actors yeah, that people yeah. know like like i know like keanu reeves was in a video game recently but like he you was, could bring in was. actual actors and they could be in it and it that will then bring in more people because so, like, oh i like that guy yeah he's doing this thing wales interactive, do it. wales interactive this is a really weird connection right wales interactive uh, also made the infectious <laughs> magnus of dr decker okay which is an fmv murder mystery game right um and one of the people who worked on the F- the infectious magnus of Doctor Decker also worked on Contradiction Spot the Liar. Okay. Which is a which is an FMV game, uh, sort of a point and click live action adventure game that I mentioned to you when we first started talking about Nightbook. Yes, yes, you did. So it's kind of funny that um, that, the, that the same studio that's doing Nightbook also did something which is connected to um, yeah, which is connected to the to the one of the games that I mentioned to you, um, and the infectious madness of Doctor Decker is. It's it's like a almost like a psychiatry simulator, I think, where you play a psychiatrist, and you have to solve these people's personal mysteries hmm. by playing um, by playing their by playing um, uh, their psychiatrist. So and you can I actually mean, ask it's... questions. You can actually type out questions and ask them. Yeah. And they have different responses, and and you it's... have to solve a murder through it. It's very Lovecraftian. But, um... Yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting concept that's come a long way since the early days of, of Night Trap. Yeah. I mentioned Night Trap when we spoke about it before. 
um, Night Trap being like this sort of, I think it's 80s or 90s game that's you you're using cctv to trap burglars in houses and do weird stuff yeah there's actually an element of that there's um in nightbook there's a security camera mm-hmm. system that you can check onto different yes. rooms in the house and you can check your dad's room you can check the kitchen you can check the hallway and sometimes it'll cut back there and you think oh will someone turn up there so yeah and it's it's Given the fact that it's it's in like, it's it's set canon canon wise in a house. It's set in your house, and that's it. And it's re- it's really good in using that environment. I quite liked it. Yeah, yeah, it is good in that way, isn't it? So, um, to go back mm-hmm. to, to 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 bridge it back to Nightbook. Mm. Um, I think we both had a. We had an interesting time. It's our first sort of experience in playing a game like this, and it's our first experience in having a review copy for something. It is. This is the first time we've been given given something yes, before it's yes. come out. So I guess we're open for we're <laughs> open for business on on this one now. Yeah, why not? Yeah, you know, if you got a, got a short film coming out or anything, you know. Yeah, yeah, short film, video game. Give hit us hit us up. <laughs> hit us up. We're officially uh, open for business. We can receive review copies of things, and we can give us our review. Obviously, um, we'll be as honest as we can be. Yes. I think that'll reflect in our ratings of Nightbook, which <laughs> I'd like to get on to. Um, we, you mentioned that you have a real rating, or you've thought of one already? I've, I've, yeah, I've thought of one. Um, would, would you like me to go first? Yes, yes, please. So I think, if I was to be honest... I'd like your give... rating and why, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, I would give Nightbook somewhere in the region of... A seven or a seven point five. Okay. Um, so if you want to be technical, seven point two five. But depending on when you ask me and what happens in the future with other stuff, it might go seven point five, seven oh, or seven. Um, I, you know what? I so I started playing this right. I, I booted it up. I was, I was picking the options, and I was like, okay, this makes sense. Yeah, I'll, you know, do you do I give give dad some medicine or who who do I you know whose call do I take? Yeah, this is mm. fine. Do I interpret? Or search up um, what the woman's saying, and then it got to a point where, and I mentioned this earlier, where I was, I was genuinely sat there for like ten minutes, going, "Right, if I do this, then this might happen, this might happen, and okay, it might lead to that." Or if I pick the other one, that makes more sense because this and this and that. And I was literally sat there for like ages, just kind of going, trying to logically think of what would I do in that situation, um, and go through scenarios. And I generally sat there for ages, and I was going, "This is." I was like, I don't know what to do. Do I do that? Do I do this? And I, was, it, I thought I'd just be sitting down for like an hour and just going, right, okay, that one, that one. But it generally kind of got me in and got me involved and actually got me thinking like as a person in that situation, which made me want to go back and go, okay, well, what if I didn't do that? What if I did something else? What if I picked the other one? Yeah. Um, so I enjoyed it. It's something that I could go back and replay. Um, at some point, if, you know, if I'm ever like, oh, I've got an hour to kill, I might go back and go, yeah, I'll just go go back on Nightbook and just do something else. You know, pick some other stuff. Go see Colin Salmon. Why not? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't go and see Colin Salmon. Like <laughs> I'm, wait, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm treating myself to that, you know. Yeah, I was there. I was there for Colin Salmon, to be honest. <laughs> That's why I was I was like, yeah, I want to so see Colin Salmon in this game. I want to get my money's <laughs> worth. So, and I certainly did. But my rating for Nightbook. Yeah. Once again, I think I find us being of one mind, Corey. My <laughs> rating of Nightbook is eight. Oh, okay. Eight out of ten. I'm going to go for a solid point ahead. I'm going to go eight. Nice. I'm going to go because great FMV game, good experience, yes. mm-hmm. good horror. Not really as scary as I thought it would be. So no. good for me, I'm not really, I'm not really a big horror fan. If you know me. To be me. fair, I was similar. I was like, if this is like a proper like jump scare sort of thing, I was like, I'm not gonna. But I was like, you know what? No, it's not that. It's good. No, it's just more supernatural kind of suspense horror, which is yes. good for me. I yes. like a, It's about what you don't see. Exactly. It's in yeah. The great, in the words of Sir Christopher Lee, horror is about what you don't see, mm. and. It's about what's around the corner. It's not about the jump scare from the animatronic teddy bear or whatever. Yes. It's about what could be around the corner. What will the person look like when they turn around, but we don't see it. It's exactly. That, it's it's that that gets you scary. It, it's not the it's not the one thousand gallons of blood. It's it's the whole thing of like your imagination is scarier than what actually it could happen. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I feel like that's what Nightbook captures. Yeah. So your your mind my... your mind will make up something scarier than if they just showed it to you. 
yes, exactly. That is um, that is my rating for Nightbook. Eight out of uh, nice. Eight out of ten reels. So I believe the weekly wreck is yours. It, it is mine. Um, I've wanted to talk about this film for a little bit, and I've always kind of gone. I don't really ever see a re- like a, a time when I'm going to okay. be able to well, for it to it make sense. To Nightbook. Uh, it's it's a horror. Okay. That's for that's for loose connection, but it's like the only time I think I can get away with mentioning this. And I'm taking us back. That yes. If it was my weekly wreck this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I probably actually would have recommended the infectious madness of Doctor Decker or contradictions about the liar. So. Well. An additional y- an additional wreck is if. You're not interested in whatever horror film <laughs> is about to say. Go and look at Contradiction. Go and look at The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker. They're both good games. Anyway, You'd be on, shocked sorry. to know. That's not my wreck. Uh, but, again, to be fair, you might enjoy that more than mine. Um, well, okay. I've, I've, I've gone from a horror film from 1977. All right. What um, which, which may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm going to recommend Suspiria, the original one, not the remake. Okay, well, you have to... Fill me in a little bit. Okay. So, uh, I will put out, though, the remake is actually good because it changes the story around and it makes it its own thing, so it's still good. So, Suspiria, right, centres around this um, female who's just joined a, like, ballet school, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so she, she goes there, she's living there with all of her, you know, classmates and she's learning to dance and to do ballet and then this... Essentially, stuff goes wrong, people die, but you don't know how or why. Mm-hmm. Like, um, <laughs> it's this woman, like, uh, I think she, she either gets hanged or falls for the ceiling. It's been a couple of years since I've seen this. Yes. And it's like, why are people just disappearing? Like, her friend disappears and everyone's trying to get to the bottom of this, but why? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, this whole, it's, it's a whole thing of you never really see what's happening. And it just it takes you on this kind of thread of just different stuff going on throughout the whole film, and it's one of those things where it's psychological horror. It's more of a thriller. There's no like, jump scares or anything really, but it's it's a bit weird. It's one of those films where like you're gonna leave it and you're gonna be a bit like confused for a couple of hours of what what have I watched? Like what was that? It's a bit. Mm, but then once you let it sink in and once you kind of think back, you then start to kind of go, actually, okay, that makes more sense. You need you need time to 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 watch this. Like if you've got something planned afterwards, don't watch this film. Like give yourself a good couple of hours after watching this to to relax. Does it make um, you think? Does it make you think, or does it make you scared? What's... Uh, it it did it, it made me think, but more like more of like a, a story point, more of like. I, I, it's one of the films where you watch it and I'm, I'm sat there going it's weird, it's horror but it's kind of genius <laughs> and I love it. Um, it it's not like a, you know, you're not going to go back home and think politically about the world and question everything but you're going to go you're going to go back and it's, it's an experience for, for definite right, okay. it's, it's a journey it's a nice <laughs> nice one hour forty experience okay okay so um, when was the last time you you saw that? I watched it when I was at college. We were actually we were we did this thing at college where you had to watch a, a film every week and Valetris picked it and Suspiria was one of them. Um, I'm not a horror fan. Yes. I want to preface this. I'm not like I've not seen like any horror films that have come out recently. I've not seen like The Conjuring or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I don't mind the old 80s 90s sort of like Nightmare on Elm Street Friday the 13th, but so I I wasn't in high hopes. I was like, oh, okay, so we're doing a horror thing for October, but I was pleasantly surprised. It's been about two, three years since I've seen the original, and about a year, two years since I've seen the remake. Um, but it, it's great. It's a great film. I recommend it to it. I always bring it up whenever, like, favourite film comes in. I yeah, always yeah. mention it, because I'm like, it... it's more of a unique thing to watch. I'm like, watch it. You can hate it, that's fine, but watch it. Did it turn you around on, on the thought of horror? You're still not a horror man. It showed me that there's certain types of horror that aren't just jump scares that I might enjoy. I like okay. the more psychological stuff. Okay. Um, I, I I prefer the unseen than the seen, essentially. Yeah, there, like what I said. Yes. So, um, if I had to rate it. Yeah, I was about to ask. I hope you do. I hope you do uh, a rating for me. For me, it's a solid eight point five. Oh. 
going a bit going a bit the higher going a bit the higher i am it's probably to fair one of my higher ratings yeah, that i've right. done <laughs> it's good. it's really good it's really good great well i look i look forward to i look forward to it do you ever think that we'll ever get a 10 reels ever again just to entertain the fact because if something gets 10 you know what the rule is Corey. what's the rule it's if something gets 10 we have to review it yes do you ever think that you know what I reckon I reckon something might, but I can guarantee it will get ten because one of us is taking a mic and wants the other one to watch it. No. Oh. <laughs> so we'll go ten because now you have to watch it because we've got to talk. It would be like, ha- have you ever seen Hoodwinked? I, I think okay, that animated film with. The... Yes. Right. Okay. Go on then. It would be something like that. Like that will get a ten, so we have to do an episode on Hoodwinked. That, right, that well... that's what it will be. Okay. I mean, okay. <laughs> there are definitely films that I would give a 10 it's hard for me to give a 10 because i'm always of the opinion of not every single film is perfect but in the sake of radio and having to review it i'll probably preface that i'm going to give it a 10 but you probably i'll probably give it a 9.5 if you ask me in person fair enough yeah so far only one film has got to 10 reels only one film has and it was yours it was my film yes it was do you remember it was rogue one it was rogue one yeah and then we reviewed it but we reviewed it in star wars month so we did it was sort of a crossover with Star Wars Month as well as me reviewing uh, Rogue One and the new rule that if it gets 10 reels, we have to review it. Yes. So, um, obviously, we didn't give uh, Rogue One a real rating when we reviewed it because it already got a 10. It already got 10, yeah. That's also the rule as well. <laughs> yeah. You can't re- Once it gets 10, that is all it gets. Yeah. You cannot re-real rating when it gets 10 because 10 is the highest it can get. Exactly. Do you think we'll have an opposite? Whether if it gets a 10 or a 1, we have to review it. That's one star film. To be fair, there's definitely stuff out there that I would give a 1. I'm more likely to give a 1 star review than a, than a 10. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll pen that, shall we? We'll put a pin in that. Put, put a pin in it until one of us mentions the film and gets 1 star. So, like, one, star, one of us recommends we'll the film. we'll bring back the rule that if it gets 1 star, we have to review it as well and just slate it for the whole time. That that's more likely because if I if I ever watch a film that I think is one star, I'm guaranteed gonna the next time it's my rec go right. You've not seen this film. I had to watch it. It gets one star. Now you have to watch no, it. No, you have to watch it as well. Oh, yeah. No, it's like it's like we're putting each other under the pressure. It's because yes, one of it's us like, has suffered. It's it like I've witnessed this. Now you have to. Yeah. Now you have to watch it. Okay. <laughs> well, that was our review of Nightbook. We hope you enjoyed. Um, it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye, and a goodbye from Corey. Goodbye.